Hantavirus syndrome is characterized by pulmonary edema, hypoxia, and hypotension. It is preceded by a flu-like illness. Clinical features. Hantavirus begins with a prodromal phase of approximately 3 to 4 days of vague flu-like symptoms. Early symptoms include fatigue, fever, and muscle aches, especially in the large muscle groups like thighs, hips, backs, and sometimes shoulders. These symptoms are universal. There may also be headaches, dizziness, chills, and abdominal problems such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Nausea, vomiting, thrombocytopenia, dizziness, and dyspnea without a cough uh, may help distinguish hantavirus from acute respiratory distress syndrome or other atypical and viral types of pneumonia. After the prodromal phase, there can be rapid development into hantavirus syndrome characterized by pulmonary edema, hypoxemia, tachycardia, and hypotension. This often occurs within 48 hours and rapidly turns into respiratory failure. Patients often will develop metabolic acidosis due to severe infection. Orthostatic hypotension can quickly progress to cardiogenic shock with cardiovascular decompensation. Patients with renal disease could develop oliguria followed by diuresis. Pulmonary auscultation may demonstrate rails. Descent into the pulmonary syndrome carries a mortality rate of around 50% to 70%. Hantavirus, hemorrhagic fever, and renal syndrome. Five distinct phases. Febrile phase, hypotensive phase, oliguric phase, polyuric phase, and convalescent phase. Febrile phase, the incubation period is approximately 2 to 4 weeks and starts abruptly with a high fever, headache, vomiting, abdominal pain, and back pain, often associated with blurred vision and somnolence. The high fever is typically present for 3 to 7 days and ends with conjunctival hemorrhages and palatal PTKI. Potential is uh, then present for the next several hours to two days with approximately one third of deaths due to fulminant irreversible shock during this phase. Oliguria will last for three to seven days with a transient decrease in renal function accompanied by back or abdominal pain that may need dialysis. Approximately half of the deaths occur during the oliguric phase. Oliguric phase is a positive prognostic sign with evidence that renal function is improving and urinary output will increase up to several liters per day. Recovery with return to baseline clinical and laboratory markers is reached over the next six months without significant long term complications. Evaluation. Initial radiographs are most often normal, but approximately one third will exhibit mild uh, interstitial changes. Heart size is normal and there are no findings of pulmonary vasculature engorgement within 48 hours. Basilar or central alveolar flooding occurs and pleural effusions are often seen. These findings differ from those seen in adult respiratory distress syndrome which has a more peripheral distribution and lacks the early prominent interstitial edema. This chest radiograph is showing the initial interstitial infiltrates. This is the severe form, form of bilateral interstitial infiltrates. These radiographs showing the evolution of hantavirus pulmonary syndrome 
in a 30 year old woman a showing uh, before onset of illness and the radiograph b is uh, during admission c after intubation and d is just before death cbc and pbf progressive thrombocytopenia is one of the most consistent laboratory findings occurring in virtually all patients and and the, uh, it is frequently present during the prodromal phase. Another critical laboratory finding is that of circulatory immunoblasts, atypical lymphocytes, and elevated hematocrit. Once the patient needs hospitalization, a peripheral blood smear may demonstrate myelocytes, metamyelocytes, and promyelocytes with severe thrombocytopenia and hypocapnia. Based on clinical research, other laboratory findings are hyponatremia, slightly prolonged APTT, decreased protein level, mildly elevated LDL level, and micros microscopic hematuria. Serologic diagnosis. Uh, the diagnosis is confirmed by serologic identification of IgM and IgG antibodies. Virus isolation, however, is not useful due to low yield. Management The probability of survival increases with early recognition and aggressive cardiopulmonary support. Currently, there is no specific therapy available to treat. Uh, therefore, the cornerstone of treatment remains supportive measures. In some clinical research, Ribavirin has been proposed as a treatment option with possibly some benefit to inhaled ribavirin, but overall is ineffective in hantavirus syndrome. Respiratory failure can be severe, with around 40% of cases requiring mechanical ventilation. Extracorporeal membrane oxygenation is a possible treatment strategy for those patients not improving with mechanical ventilation, fluid balance with goals of maintaining normal to high filling pressures for cardiac output and minimizing pulmonary edema will likely be difficult. Inotropic agents such as dobutamine are encouraged early. While awaiting serologic confirmation, broad spectrum antibiotics should be initiated. Similar treatment strategies apply to renal syndrome. With regards to supportive care, hemodialysis may be utilized during the oliguric phase due to transient renal function insufficiency. Clinical studies in China suggest that giving the patient bevirin in the first five days after symptom onset has significant mortality reduction.